Oh, what do we have here? An evil doctor, a suitcase lunchbox thing, and a little girl in a bubble. Nasty looking crown on a skull. Well, this all seems very normal and couldn't possibly take in the wrong way out of context. Hey guys, welcome to That LP Show. The name of the game is Cave Story. Originally released in 2004 as a freeware PC title, this game was developed by one man and one man alone, Mr. Daisuke Ayama, better known to his fans as Pixel. That's right, he developed this game by himself over a period of five years while on his free time. And this game uh, quickly received popularity on the internet after its initial self-publication, prompting independent ne de independent developer Nicholas to aid Ayama in porting the game over to the WiiWare and DSi services. And it eventually released was released uh, on Steam under the t under the title Cave Story Plus. That's the version that we're playing right now. The game was also released on the 3DS eShop and received a full 3D rendered upgrade on the Nintendo 3DS, uh, compliments of publisher NIS America. I would be playing that version of the game were it not for the fact that I don't own the game, and even if I did, I don't have a way of recording for my 3DS quite yet. So we have a few options here that we could play with. We can uh, actually have the background music as the original freeware version, the remade version for the WiiWare version, uh, the remade soundtrack for the WiiWare version, or this remastered version that appeared in Cave Story 3D that was actually remixed by Danny Baranowski who did the the music for Super Meat Boy. We also have the option to play with the original 8-bit graphics or the new remastered graphics. I see no reason why we shouldn't play with the new graphics. I mean, if I wanted the old 8-bit version, I'd have just downloaded the game for free instead of paying money to download it on Steam. Anyway, this version of the game also has an option to play as Curly Brace, the female protagonist of Cave Story. I figure since I'm on this Metroid kick, I might as well play a very Metroid-inspired game as a girl, like I have been with the Metroid series. So, let's get started. This is Cave Story, Curly Story. Someone's transmission. Connecting to network. Logged on. Starting IM chat. Sue? Are you there? It's me. It's Kazuma. I was somehow able to escape, but I got lost. I'm in a shelter without anything inside. If you're reading this, please answer. Please? Okay, so here we are. This is Curly Brace. We're just waking up here in a cave at the beginning of the story, hence the name. We got this little thing right here. It refills life. We could uh, use this as a save point. All right, seems like there's nothing else to do here. Let's get out of the water first. And I do apologize if you hear some loud clicking noises. I'm using a Logitech Pro Controller, and it has some clicky buttons on it. I would be using the Xbox 360 controller, but the D-pad on that thing sucks, so I'm using this. Okay, here's one of the first Metroid inspirations. We have a life capsule, which increases our max health, very reminiscent of the energy tanks from Metroid. And we don't have a weapon quite yet, so that's why we're uh, going into the depths of the cave. As you can see, as we uh, enter this water, we have an air counter that starts counting down. We don't want it to hit zero. I'm pretty sure anybody who's played Sonic the Hedgehog knows what'll happen. And we got the hermit gunsmith here he seems to be sleeping so everybody be quiet while we jack his shit and we get the polar star it's our first weapon in the game someone's transmission who is this someone searching for sue one sue found ha <laughs> google joke sue answer me they're looking for you are you asleep or what your brother is so lonely Aw, oh, poor him. Okay, now that we have a gun, we can start killing off some enemies. There we go. As you see, uh, when I killed that enemy, it dropped this weird gold triangle thing. And when we pick those up, it actually gives experience points to our equipped weapon. And uh, the more we collect, obviously, the, more str the, the stronger our weapons become. And if we take damage, we will actually lose our uh, weapon experience, which I believe they did that in another game. I can't seem to remember what game it was. I'm, I'll, I'll pr I'm probably 
going to remember at some point. Okay, let's take out these guys. I do want to be at level 2 before uh, going through that door right there. And speaking of that door, yeah, you don't want to jump right towards it. It's got an eyeball in there, and if you uh, try to jump into it, it'll hurt you. So we want to take it out first. There we go. All right, leveled up to level 2. That's where we wanted to be. Come on, Sue. Type something, will you? Starving over here. I'm so hungry that I even ate a cockroach. Well, just kidding. But just so you know, if I get to that point, I'll do it. it sounds like something they'd write in uh, Earthbound. Give me the key. No way. Are you trying to protect that Sue girl? She's an outsider. Sue is a good person. I won't betray Sue. Toroko, the next time that doctor shows up, someone else will be taken away. If Sue wasn't turned in, you could be in danger. B but just hand over the key. Okay, we got some cute little bunny people here. And these are called Mamigas, and this is the Mamiga Village. What is it with games that name geographical locations after the people who inhabit them? I mean, we got Mamiga Village, we got Elfheim, Dwarf Village, and you don't see places called Humanburg here in the real world, although I am aware of a town called Menville, so I guess that makes my entire point invalid. Anyway, let's talk to this guy. What? You're not an enemy? I thought you were one of them. No way, I'm a good guy. What's your name? My name is King. I'm the number one in this village. Though I say number one, it doesn't really mean much. There are only six of us left in the village. Well, really, including Sue, it's seven. But she's not one of us. She's just an outsider that came into our village. Okay, sounds like he doesn't like this Sue person. Let's go into this door. This is the reservoir, okay. I guess so. Got somebody fishing right here. Well, you're not Sue. No, but I know who she is. That cute girl who is always hiding in Arthur's house, right? She recently came to Mimiga Village. She fell into the reservoir there. I don't think she's very fond of us. It seems like she hates everyone in the village, but she's a Mimiga. Same as the rest of us. Okay, so she fell in here. Looks like she left something sparkly. Something shines brightly. And we got the silver locket. I'm sure this will be important. We can kill that fish right there if you want to. I'm going to let it live. Uh, the only thing you really get for letting it live is at the end of the game, you'll unlock an achievement for letting it live. Wah! Hey, get back here. Hand over that key. No! I don't wanna... Not so much of a leader getting knocked out by a little girl, are you? Ah, Toroko! Don't underestimate me! Okay. Got some person right there. What are they doing? Okay, obviously eating. Jeez, you scared me. Sorry about that. I was wondering, do you know somebody named Sue? Sue? Oh, you mean the girl staying at Arthur's house, right? She lives together with Toroko. That girl's a real cutie. She must be looking for flying dragons. Okay. Wonder if there really is such a thing. Dragons that fly in the sky. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, they would be in the sky if they flew. You don't fly in the water. Okay, well, before moving on, there's a few places I want to check out. I want to come up here to Yamashita Farm. Hey, I see you sitting there. What do you got to say? This is the farm where we grow flowers. My job is to protect this farm. To us Mamiga, these flowers are a precious source of food, but not the red flowers. I heard that if we eat the red flowers, our blood pressure skyrockets and we'll die in an instant. Fortunately, on this farm, we don't grow those vile red flowers. Oh, so they're kind of like me with energy drinks. What's this? It sure is. Okay, so down here we have another life capsule. And that's pretty much all we came here for. Moving on. Get up there. And if you noticed, uh, Curly here actually has dialogue that she speaks. If you're playing as uh, the other guy, whose name I won't mention right now because it's kind of a plot point, uh, he doesn't have any lines. He's a silent protagonist. Hey, how you doing? The name's Jack. I'm the number two in the village. Beyond here is Mamiga Cemetery. There our hero Arthur rests eternally in peace. That's great, but why are you standing in front of this door? Why? Well, mushrooms have taken over Mamiga Cemetery. Oh, 
God, some of the... Uh, this game has me saying things that I never thought I'd say before. So I'm keeping watch to make certain that they don't come into the village. Okay. So many not normal things. So many not normal things. Okay, if we jump up here, we get a special little item. This is the map system, which we'll probably never be using. So as long as you always maintain a sense of exploration, you will sometimes find the way out. This is my hope. So yeah, there's our there's our measly little map there. Not really much. We're going to be ignoring that for the most part. Here's where we want to be. You brat! Hey! You bitch! Oh, I shot her. Um, you okay? Yeah, we need the silver locket in order to make her pop out. If you don't have the silver locket, she won't pop out and we won't be able to progress with the rest of the game. Wow! Oh, help me! Help me! Huh? You're not the doctor? No, I'm Curly Brace. Oh, sorry about that. The doctor's such a cruel and evil person. He shows up in the village and kidnaps Mamiga, at times even killing someone. The doctor, he killed my older brother. Ah, that pendant. You picked it up for me? Sue gave it to me. But I don't want it anymore. King gets bent out of shape when Sue and I get along. Please keep it. Whoa, oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh yeah! What the fuck is this thing? It's like a suitcase lunchbox uh, toaster thing. I found you. It's no use hiding from me. I've got the nose of a clever harrier. Indeed. Oh, who's this? Weren't you two trapped in bubbles at the in the opening cutscene? Yes, he has the nose and the brain of a dog. Misery. I found her first. You two, you're with the doctor. You must be Sue. The great doctor has summoned you. Come along with me. Huh? But I'm not Sue. Fuck it, you're a girl. We're kidnapping you anyway. Wah, Balrog. The rest is up to you. I'm the wrong person. I told you. Not this again. I'm always having to clean up. I'm the one who found her, not Misery. So what's up? You want to fight me with that little pea shooter? Yeah, why not? Understood. All right, blast away, jump over him when he starts charging at you, and he's pretty easy to take out. He's only got like 60 HP. This fight would be much harder if we only had a level one weapon, but as you can see, well, there you go. I'll remember this. Lunchbox away. And we defeated Balrog. And yes, uh, I know what he actually is. He's a robot, and he's meant to be designed like a bar of soap because all of the enemies in this game were uh, bars of soap. Well, Ayama was originally designing this game, and that design choice inspired the character Balrog. He actually is supposed to look more like a bento box, which apparently actually is a Japanese lunchbox. So there you go. He really is a lunchbox. Okay, you got anything new to say? Besides gulp? Toriko's gone. They took her. Toriko has been kidnapped? Bah! Now the only girl left in the entire village is Sue, and she doesn't want to sleep with you either. Okay, we need to get into Arthur's house. That seems like an important place to be. Oh, hey, King. Arthur's house key. There should be at least one more copy somewhere. Toriko, she feigns ignorance. I wonder, maybe Jack would know something. Okay. Let's see if Jack knows something. They took Toriko. What did you say? Toriko's been kidnapped? That's terrible. We have to inform King. Okay, so now we're going back into the assembly hall and talking to King again. Not Toriko, too. Torko's older brother, Arthur, was our strongest warrior, but he was killed by the doctor himself. I wasn't even able to protect Torko. There are two keys to Arthur's house. Torko has one of them. The other is inside Mamiga Cemetery. Okay, so now that Jack's no longer standing in the way, we'll be able to go into the cemetery and find that key. Really? These are the mushrooms everybody was worried about? They're nothing. Oh, Chef Ninja. Shoot him in the back of the head. We have to shoot him in the back of the head because he's actually blocking our attacks with that knife of his. Oh, what's this over here? 
Oh, we got a tiny little person. A little teeny tiny person. What do you got to say? Can I help you? Obviously not at this point in the game. Remember him for later. Take out all these mushrooms. Whoa, 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 whoa. And he's done. We got a sparkly thing over by the grave here. Arthur's grave. Something is written on the headstone. Here rests the true Mamiga hero, Arthur. And we got Arthur's key. Why would they bury his house key with him? That's so weird. Okay, now we got Arthur's key. We can go into Arthur's house. Okay, what do we got here? A little computer console. Text is displayed on screen. But just so you know, if I get to that point, I'll do it. Okay, so it looks like uh, it's that message from that Kazuma guy. He was trying to reach somebody here, most likely Sue. Allow teleportation to Egg Corridor. Egg Corridor, now accessible via teleport. Egg Corridor. Who is this evil doctor they're talking about? Dr. Eggman? Anyway, we'll be heading into the Egg Corridor, but that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, thank you for watching that LP show, and have a one that is good.